There are only a few top guys in the league, so in this series I'm going to look at some of the up and coming stars who are making their way into the spotlight. In this episode we are traveling down to the swamps of Florida to look at one of the most underrated young stars in the league in LaVishka Chanel. And took six guys and the ball pops loose and Colorado picks it up! Out of Irving, Texas was seemingly a star in the making, as Lavishka's mother was a stud at basketball, and to this day still holds many records at a Divisional III school in Iowa called Dubuque. The athletic lineage flowed down to Lavishka, who was an avid basketball fan growing up in a life that was anything but normal. On July 17, 2009, the Schnault family was heading back from a cookout at a friend's house, and was driving down the swamped Irving highways. After such a long time at the pool party, Lavishka's mother was exhausted, and so Lavishka Sr. and her were switching spots when tragedy struck. While moving spots, the car drifted into oncoming traffic, and after two cars struck the vehicle, Lavishka Sr. passed away. The experience was scarring for not only Lavishka, but also his five other siblings, as they witnessed something that would stay with them for the rest of their lives. Although many would like to suppress the memory as best as they could, Lavishka decided to grow his signature dreadlocks from that day on to honor his father. Not only that, but when he scores a touchdown, he points to the sky in homage of a man that guided Lavishka through the first decade of his life. Going by Vishka by his friends, Lavishka faced an ultimatum with the very dreadlocks he grew to honor his father, as he was forced to cut them to play basketball, and so because of it, his hardwood dreams were left in the past. Now that basketball was off the table, Lavishka considered playing on the gridiron, and after talking with a good friend, he decided to give it a shot. By the way, thanks to whoever that friend was who said that. We do not care. But anyways, Lavishka enjoyed playing football in his backyard as a running back or linebacker to choose large frame for such a young age. But trying out was a different story, as Lavishka ran routes as a wide receiver, which was once again out of his comfort zone, and he struggled as you can guess with the complete lack of actual experience. His disappointing showing earned him a spot on the freshman team, but it was really only the beginning as Lavishka worked relentlessly to earn a spot on the varsity team as a junior. Lavishka not only made the team, but led DeSoto to a perfect 16-0 record and a state championship for the first time in program history as he ended his high school experience at a place he never expected to be. With a solid career at DeSoto behind him, schools like Arkansas, ASU, Bama, and Colorado were interested. But in order to get some legitimate action, he decided to travel down to Colorado and become a Buffalo. If you want to learn more about his story, I got most of the information from this great article by Jordan Reed on the Draft Network. But anyways, off to the Rockies. Although he was coming off a historic season as a senior at DeSoto, nothing was guaranteed for Lavishka in Boulder, and although he played in all 12 games, his under 170 yards was a bit underwhelming, and was honestly pretty similar to his early production in high school. Yet again, Lavishka put in the work going into his sophomore season, and the work showed up big time as he had over 1,000 yards and 11 touchdowns, and was named Pac-12 in only his second year. In a matter of months, Lavishka went from practically a nobody to one of the best wide receivers in the entire Pac-12. Coming off of a great sophomore campaign, there was pretty high expectations for Lavishka going into his last season at Boulder. After putting up over 750 yards and 6 touchdowns, Lavishka ended his season a bit early as he declared for the NFL Draft. The Jacksonville Jaguars select Lavishka Chenault, wide receiver, Colorado. With a 42nd pick, Lavishka had done the unexpected, and after only starting football as a freshman at DeSoto, he was now in the NFL. Going into his first year, there wasn't much expectations as to what he could do as a rookie, but his production was quite impressive in the same offense as a young beast and James Robinson. That year, Lavishka had exactly 600 yards and 5 touchdowns on the worst team in football. Sadly, Lavishka's production didn't mean much, as he was on a terrible Jacksonville unit that was in desperate need of change. Dang! That's tough. Going into 21, things were changing in Duval as the team hired former Florida and Ohio State head coach Urban Meyer and had a bunch of picks to work with. There's a whole lot of new for the Jaguars top to bottom, from the coaching changes to a brand new quarterback in Trevor Lawrence, and upon that some new additions in the receiving game with Marvin Jones and wide receiver convert Travis Etienne joining DJ Chark and LaVishka in a packed room of young talent. Now that Jacksonville has all these new additions, there are now some questions as to what's next for all the guys like Lavishka and James who have a ton of talent and production in store. 
You may think that guys like Travis and Martin will take a large target share, but you and I both know that they are likely throwing the ball a ton, especially with the fact that they're moving Travis to the receiving core. With more targets to go around, Lavishka has the ability to up his production and prove whether or not he's a wide receiver 1, 2, or 3, or whatever. So it'll be exciting to see what he brings in 2021. Lavishka's 6 foot 220 frame might seem more akin to a running back than a wideout. But surprisingly enough, his stout build doesn't prevent his explosiveness on the field, and he can outrun defenders with some legit speed. Not only that, but Lavishka has great hands, and when you combine that with his awareness, it's pretty tough to go up against. Not only does his size work against DBs, but he can practically play any position under the sun with his just pure athleticism. Although a lot of positives, there's still some room to grow in his game, and one of the major elements that needs to improve is his route running. I mean, it makes sense that Lavishka wouldn't be a phenomenal route runner since he was a Swiss Army knife in Boulder. But now that he can focus on just his own abilities, there's definitely some potential for him to become one of the best in the offense. All of this in mind, Lavishka is one of those do-it-all wide receivers that you love to have, but will definitely take some time to perfect. In his case, Lavishka needs to fine-tune his game, especially his route running and release, before he can truly be on his A game. Now will that happen in 21? Not completely likely. But as a rookie, he has already made noticeable strides, and so now there is a lot of potential for his sophomore year. I mean, if he can come close to his sophomore season at Colorado, then I'm pretty sure that he'd be pretty happy. Is it realistic in such a packed offense? I don't really think so. Instead, I think a bit of an elevated year from his rookie campaign would be the most likely. Something around 800 yards and 6 touchdowns seems like the ballpark for Lavishka in 21. Not ridiculous, but solid enough for someone who is only 2 years in and still with plenty of room to grow. Lavishka Chenault has had one of the roughest roads to the NFL, and although many would be afraid of the past, Lavishka embraces what made him the star he is today, and that's something I can get behind. He brings some pressure, they get to Chenault, and there he goes! Lavishka Chenault! They are not gonna catch him! Thanks for watching the video. If you enjoyed, subscribe, like, and comment down below what videos you want next. But anyways, I appreciate everyone who made it here, and we'll see you guys soon. Peace.